Hello, welcome back. In the last video, we learned how to install a CDK with the JBoss Developer Studio using the Red Hat Development Suite. Now we'll see how to deploy an application into this environment. On the welcome page in Red Hat Central, you'll see that there is an OpenShift application. Click on that. This will connect by default to the container development environment that we just installed. So if you look at the connection parameters, these are already set for you. So this is pointing to the master's URL for the CDK that got just installed and the, the credentials are also set. The protocol is set to basic. All this configuration information for CDK is stored in dot mini shift folder under your user home. So if you go to your user home, find a, a dot mini shift folder, it's a hidden folder. Get inside, you'll find a file with the name CDK and that would have the settings uh, that, that are used by this, this environment. So let's move forward. And now it connects to the OpenShift environment. Remember that in the last video, we saw that there was a project created there with the name My Project. You can use the same project to deploy or you can create a new project by clicking this button. Now let's uh, deploy a, a JBoss EAP application. So I'll, I'll filter by choosing EAP here. And let's choose JBoss EAP 6.4 as the version of the app server. In order to deploy an application, I'm now using the an example. The code is on the GitHub and I'm just providing the URL for my code. And I'm removing the rest of the stuff. There is no context directory or a GitHub reference. I'll leave the rest of the things as default. We are going to run one replica. If you have used OpenShift from a web console, all the parameters that you would try to set in the advanced options are all here. Just go with the defaults and use the default route, route and click next and finish. This will create all the objects that a OC new app would create. It is creating an image stream, a service, a build configuration, deployment configuration, and a route. Let's give it a minute for the app to be created. At this point, to clone the Git repository to your local machine, I leave it as clone to the default location, which is slash user slash v slash git. So I'll just leave it there and say finish. It will also clone the source code to my local workstation. So right now it's doing a git clone. So git clone is now complete. We have the application project here in the project explorer. In the OpenShift Explorer tab, you'll also see that there is a connection to OpenShift master. I'm expanding that. Here is that project with the name my project. Inside that, there is this service, the name. I, I left it as the default names, and there is a build running. You can right click on this, look at the build logs by, and it shows me that hey, it's cloned the source code and it is initiating the S2I build. So we'll give it a minute for the build to be complete and we'll come back. The build is in progress. You can see that the Maven dependencies are being downloaded. The build is now complete. You can see that it created a war file, created a container out of it, pushed it into the registry, and push is successful. Now let's look at what's happening with the container. The pod is now running, so we can also look at the pod logs. So these are all JBoss EEP logs. Root.war is deployed, and the application should now be running. Let's go back to the OpenShift Explorer. Click on this service and show in web browser. This is our running application. Now let's see how to make changes to this application and, and uh, test it on the fly. Let's right click on this service. You can see that there is, there is a server adapter here. Let's select that. Now we have to make sure that the pod where the application is running and the project, the Eclipse project where the code is on the local machine are in sync. So in order to do that, we'll be setting up this server adapter. The name of this, the repository on my local machine is matching with what is listed here and clicking on finish. Now you'll see that in the server adapters, there is a new server adapter that got created and it is syncing the contents between the pod and this project. So the logs that you see here is a sync up between the pod and the project. So if you again go back to the server adapters, you can see that there is a new server adapter that got created. We'll make a small change to this app. Welcome to OpenShift Container Platform. I'll change this to welcome to JBDS integration with OpenShift. I'll, make, I'll save these changes. 
and see what happens here. You can see that there are logs here that say that, hey, there is a root.war deployed and a root.war got do deploy got created and the index.xhtml, which is my the file that I changed, it got synced with the pod. So it has sent 54 bytes of data from, from my workstation where I made the code change into the pod, which is running on OpenShift. There is a sync between the, the, the local repository and the pod. So let's go back and see what happened here. The pod is still running. I'll run this application again in browser. And hey, you see the changes here. So this is a Java application. I'm making code changes. And as soon as I save, the code changes are synced with the pod. And looking at the pod logs, the logs show that the application got just redeployed. It shows the replacement of the war file. So in this video, we have learned how to deploy an application by using an IDE into the local OpenShift cluster running on CDK and how to make changes locally, not commit to a Git repo yet, but still test the code changes immediately by just a save, right? There is no compilation, there is no building. It's all done automatically for you by JBoss Developer Studio and it is synced with the pod. I hope you enjoyed this video. Hang on, there is more to show in the next video.